A year ago, I directed I called my i9-99K and I have not removed the CPU cooler since. According to Rocket Cool, they suggest that we should replace the tim every 6 months. There is a surely chemical reaction between copper and liquid metal, specifically the thermal grizzly conductor knot, which is made mostly of gallium. And I did this to prove that the chemical reaction only occurs at the contact between the copper plate surface and liquid metal. So, if I apply more than enough liquid metal, then I should be good because at the end of the reaction, the copper gallium compound will prevent the liquid metal from continuing reacting with copper. If you go back to my first two videos about direct eye cooling this CPU, you can see many people commenting that the liquid metal would be dry or I needed to replace the screws because there would not be enough contact between the die and the cooler. So today I will go back and do all the necessary testings to see if the temperature get worse or I can improve it by changing the screws. The only difference between this setup and last year's setup is the radiator fans. I replaced the two Corsair HD120 RGB fans with these brow boys from Noctua, the NF-812x25 for better cooling performance. I ran IDA64 for 45 minutes to test and there was no CPU throttle. This is the same test I did exactly one year ago. According to Hardware Info 64, the CPU pulls around 200 watts. My room temperature was 23 degrees. Look at the CPU package temperature. Average temp is 82 degrees and max is 90 degrees. If you go back and watch my video, these two numbers are the same numbers I showed, exactly 82 and 90. So, it's time to review what lie underneath this water cooler. This is a refurbished Corsair H100i V2 I bought on Newegg 3 years ago and it still has been running very quiet. This is what it looks like on my CPU die. It is still very reflective, meaning the liquid metal remains liquid after a year of using. There's a bit of spillage, which I believe happened when I removed the cooler. There's a stand mark at the bottom left corner on my die, just like my second video. I believe this was caused by my technique of spreading the liquid metal. I should have put more on the edges of the die than in the middle. This should ensure the entire die, especially the edges, to be fully covered with a lot of liquid metal and keep the stain from appearing again. Same like the CPU, the liquid metal on the copper plate is still wet. If you look at the corner where the stain mark appears on the CPU die, there is a big blob of tin. Here's what happens if there is too little liquid metal. Last year, I also added a bit of liquid metal on this copper M.2 heatsink and used tape to cover it. However, it was too little and too thin, so the liquid metal completely reacted with the heatsink. And what I get here is an M.2 heatsink sticky with tape. I use isopropyl alcohol to clean my CPU and my water cooler. Except the mark at the bottom left, the CPU die is still very reflective. It took a very long time and a lot of Q-tips to completely clean up the liquid metal on the copper plate. After cleaning, we got a gray mark on the water block, but the surface was very smooth. It just looked ugly. I put the fleece polish back into the zip block. After a year, it got some disgusting yellow oil, but hey, it is still usable. I applied a bit on the surface and started rubbing, then cleaned it again with alcohol to bring back its beautiful face.
Do the same on the water cooler. The more you add, the better it looks. I apply even more liquid metal than last time to ensure we can get a consistent result. Extra on the block. I try to spread the liquid metal more to the four edges, especially the bottom left corner. However, the surface of the liquid metal still curves up more in the middle due to the liquid surface tension. I ran IDA64 for 50 minutes and here's the result. The average temperature is 81 degrees and max is 90 degrees. So, it is unchanged after applying new liquid metal. Well, let's switch to using screws to mount a cooler. I bought this metal backplate for AIO on Amazon, which is made specifically for Intel platforms. Even though I couldn't see or touch it when this is installed, the metal backplate looks and feels much better than a flimsy plastic one. The screw thread is M3 and I can screw it all the way in. This will ensure the water cooler is fully locked to the motherboard. I carefully removed the CPU water block so there was no spillage. There was a big blob of liquid metal at the bottom left corner and that was what I wanted. Because I didn't use the AIO standoffs, there was nothing to hold the back plate so I used some tape to temporarily keep it in place. After cleaning and applying new liquid metal, I installed the CPU cooler and screw with confidence. I believe I ran out of liquid metal. Time to clean up things and do the final run of IDA64. Again, IDA64 ran for 50 minutes, but I had to run the test two times. The first time I ran for 50 minutes and I saw the max temperature peak at 91 degrees, so I stopped. Shut down the PC, checked if the screws were tightened, waited for it to cool, and ran again. Still maxed at 91 degrees, but the average was 81 degrees, which was similar to my previous test. So let's just say the 1 degree increment in max temperature was a margin of error. But using screws is more inconvenient than the standoffs because I have to remove the entire motherboard to remove the CPU cooler. I decided to clean up and went back to mounting my cooler with standoffs. I still kept the metal backplate because I could fully screw my standoffs without using the rocket cool washers, and I highly recommend this. I did plan to use the screws if the temperature improved. But because there was no difference, switching back to standoff is more sensible because the screws I bought are not magnetic anyway. I ran IDA64 for the fourth time. With ambient temperature was 22 degrees, my average temperature was 80 degrees and max at 89 degrees. After testing this four times already, there is pretty much no difference between last year, this year, and replacing screws with only 1 to 2 degrees of error. I want to express a bit after a year of direct eye cooling my CPU and reading YouTube comments. While I was making this video, there was one guy who commented on both of my old videos that I should sand down the rocket cool frame which was used to secure the CPU because he thought, keyword here is thought, that the frame was taller than my CPU die. I replied to him that the four corners of the socket on my motherboard had equal height as the frame. So if I sand down the frame, I would also need to cut those corners on my board, which I would not do it. But people are very smart as usual, and he refused to, or could not understand what I wrote, and continued insisting that he was correct. You can go back to any footage in this video and see for yourself, the corners and the frame both have the same height. Or, just look at this, the die is literally taller than the frame. Lucky for me that I was looking at my bare die when I saw his comment, so I could check the validity of what he said. 
If he commented days later after I completed this video, he could continue spreading his stupidity and misinformation to other people, which is not good. The most popular comments that I have seen on my first two videos are liquid metal will get dry and replacing the screws would improve the temperature because they would not have enough contact. I will give you an example. Luumi is a small YouTuber, but he is an expert in liquid nitrogen cooling. In this video, he used the Rocket Cool Direct Eye Kit to cool his 9900K. The differences between his and my setup are he's using a better 9900K, have better temperature result, and a custom loop. We both used all the accessories provided by Rocket Cool, and I followed the instruction to mount my system. If you go through the comment section in his video, you won't find anyone suggesting him to replace the screws or liquid metal would get dry or he needs to sand down the damn direct eye frame which is the first stupid crap I have heard after Biden became the US president. Here's an article from Gamer Nexus when they tested the effect of liquid metal on aluminium, copper and nickel. I will have the link to the article in the description. They used a copper IHS made by Rocket Cool. So, Rocket Cool is not a random brand who will sell you crap products without testing. I would rather trust Rocket Cool more than a random person on the internet who has never tried the product himself. After a year, I can see that people have trust issues when they see bad results. They always think it is either the user errors or the product's error, but they don't account for the performance. In this case, the CPU performance. I have a very hard i9-9900K. By direct eye cooling, I reduce the temperature by 7 degrees. But for some people, they don't think it was enough because they saw someone who could reduce the temp by 15 degrees. After this video, I am done with listening to people who like to I think you need to do this because I am a lazy person. I don't like to think. I like to see the evidence. If you make those suggesting comments, you need to own the product, have backup evidence, testing methods, and results. Without those four conditions, nobody should listen to that because they are BS. For my i9, two ways I can improve the temperature. One, replacing the cooler, which is possible. Two, lapping the CPU die, which is impossible because I don't have the balls to do it. In conclusion, one, you don't need to sand the CPU frame. Two, liquid metal does not get dry easily if it is applied correctly with good amount. Three, replacing the screws does not improve the temperature. Four, I have a very hot i9-9900K. Five, don't listen to random people who never own the product or have backup evidence. I don't really want to talk like this, but seeing the comment from the frame sanding guy, I think it is necessary to remind people to think twice before talking, commenting, or making claim on topic they have no experience or knowledge about. I am no expert on any of this, but I think I have experienced enough to know how I should install my CPU cooler. I'm sorry about the rant, but after a year of reading and responding to same types of comments from different YouTube experts, it is getting super boring and I am tired. Seriously, after doing this four times, I could not focus and spilled nearly the entire bottle of IPA and spilled some of my blood too. I'll need some rest. A small suggestion, when you clean liquid metal with alcohol, you can use a small plastic spoon to scoop it safely and avoid spilling on your motherboard. And make sure to cover the contact points on your CPU with something like thermal paste. That's the end of my video. I edited and rendered this video with a small PC built in a tiny K39 case. You should check it out. Also, feel free to take a look at my two videos that I made a year ago. Warning, they both look more terrible than this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.